Welcome, viewers, to another exciting edition of the AU Talks. My name is Felicia Kouagbeji, and I'm your host for today. Today, we are discussing the publication of books, what really goes into it. As higher education stakeholders, or as players in the <coughs> higher education scene, one key item we really can't do without is our books. But do we really know what goes into its production? Of course, coming up or generating the content is one thing, and then having putting it together into these beautiful books that we read every time or wherever we find ourselves is also another thing. And that will be the focus for our discussion today. We are going to see what really goes into the production process. I'm joined in the studio by Mr. Richmond Daku, who is the CEO and creative director of Direct Concept. Do stay tuned, we'll come back shortly after the break to discuss the details. Welcome back from the break. This is AU TV and this is AU Talk. Our topic for discussion is publication of books. What really goes into it? Uh, like I said earlier, I'm joined in the studio by Mr. Richmond Daco, who is the creative director and CEO of Direct Concept. Welcome to the studio, Richmond. Thank you. We are happy to have you here. Thank you. Okay, so Direct Concept, what exactly do you people do? We are into printing okay. and designing. Mm -hmm. We print anything from books mm -hmm. to single page publications and we are into, into also into signages okay. where we do signboards, billboards mm -hmm. and 3D signs mm -hmm. as well. Can we see some of your books? Did you come with some of the books that you uh, Yeah, sure, on? sure. Um, I have um, okay. Okay. this, this, this a book we printed for AU. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we have some two here. Okay. There's a report. Okay. Mm, French, English. And English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But apart from AU, I guess you work with a couple of other companies. Yes, yes, yes. Can you know some of them? Um, some institutions that you've published books for or done. Actionaid. So. Okay. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Compassion International Ghana. Okay. Um, Ghana.com. Okay. They are into web, web, web stuff. Okay. Uh huh. Um, we printed for Nita. Okay. We printed for Coco Board. And several others. Uh, several others. Okay. Yes. Ghana Immigration Service. Okay. Yeah. So, for how long have you been in this business? I've been in it for 15 years now. How old are you? <laughs> you look <laughs> quite young to have been in the business for 15 yeah, years. Yeah, I started early. early. Okay. I started early. If I should add even my training, then you're talking about 20 years. Oh, and it, yeah. I see. We'll come to that bit because we would really want to know what um, key skills or qualifications or education yeah, background yeah. someone should have yeah. if they want to get into okay. this business. But we, we want to understand, typically, if we want to produce a book, mm -hmm. if I've brought my content to your production house to produce a book for me, mm -hmm. what goes into it? Can you walk us through the process from start to finish, finish. where we have this uh, final product that we okay. use? Book production yes. consists of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. 
we have the editing. Okay. We have the proofreading. We have the designing, the typesetting, the layouting process. Okay. To the final production, print, and binding. So this but one. Let's take it one. <coughs> yes. Have, so, yes. so what we do at our concept is we, in book production, the clients always give us a test. Okay the content for the book mm -hmm. mostly is in word processing like ms word okay format format where we will use to develop the layout mm -hmm. and the design mostly when we are done with when we get the file and we are done with the layout we give it to an in-house proofreader fine at the concept we don't have in-house proofreader we have a consultant okay. who's a proofreader mm -hmm. who goes through it to see who review the document to check for grammar, mm -hmm. check for consistency, mm -hmm. and make sure everything is appropriate mm -hmm. and it's the layout in itself, the page numbering and everything. Wh which one? I, I want to find out whether the idea of having a proofreader to look through sort of to quality assure is really the ideal or it is done. The, the reason why I'm asking whether you people actually do it is because in my field of work, of yeah. course, I work with a lot of um, printers, printers, designers, and all of that. And, and mm -hmm. I've realized that if, if you don't critically look at what has been presented mm -hmm. to you and you think that, oh, I submitted, so I trust they've done it, you would be in for a shock. Yeah. In, in that you would see all sorts of spelling mistakes, even though you gave it to them, but probably they were typing something on Transfers. the cover or in the process of transfer a lot of mistakes so you even the person who gave it to them really have to be critical and look through very carefully yeah. to be sure that yes everything is fine that's why i'm asking if indeed the proofreader is the ideal situation that is what should be done or it is actually done because i have well not so clear we we used to do that okay. but the clients mm -hmm. Have stopped us from doing that How? because first of all they they don't want to pay for proofreaders mm -hmm. they want to review the document by themselves edited by themselves okay. and make sure what they've put in the document is what it's in okay so the proofreading aspect is reducing okay. for some organization okay. but with some corporate organizations that I know mm. they want you to come with a proofreader okay. who do the job for them mm. yeah is it a request uh, at the point of the client asking you to no. submit an no. invoice? Do we you put proofreading we put there? proofreading. Okay, and then they would they can they decide can to decide. Oh, this, this document we okay. will go through ourselves. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Some people will even consult a consultant mm -hmm. to do the document for them. The proofreading is that no, the document the itself. Content the itself. content okay. itself. And then the consultants will be working hand in hand with, with you guys. You know, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. yes. So in that case, the consultant who does its own proofreading, mm. make sure everything is mm. fine. Okay. Yeah. So after the proofreader mm. has gone through, we come back to that. Mm. And if there are some changes we have to make mm -hmm. in the design, mm -hmm. we have to check some coloring, consistency, mm -hmm. or test. We do that before we give um, a copy. A but sample but before copy. we even get there, yeah. for the text and the layout and all the earlier ones mm -hmm. you mentioned, is it a client who tells you that use this font size, use this size? Do they really tell you what should be done? Or they just give you some the some client will let you know. I want the books of this size. Okay. And these are the specifications. Okay. The kind of paper you use for the cover. Okay. And the one you use for the inside pages. Mm -hmm. And some will give you a brand guide okay. that will guide you where in terms of what you use for your heading, mm -hmm. what you use for subheading, mm -hmm. and then what you use for body test. Mm. But some clients, they don't know anything. They will just say, use your own discretion. I just want a nice book, a nice design. So we use what we think is nice and present to them until they say, oh, I don't like this font, change mm, it. Mm. I don't like this test, okay. change it. I don't like this color, yeah. But say on a scale of one to 10, uh, how many people or how many institutions A do lot of do organizations doesn't even understand guide. what brand <laughs> guide is. When you even propose to them, okay. they see it to be waste, a waste of costs okay. because why should I do this and say, um, everything I do, this the format it mm. should go because that's how brand guide is. Okay. Some people want to have design for 
every job, different design, different colors. Mm. So you go to certain organization, mm -hmm. they have their logo. Let's say their logo is blue. blue. Use the A, you always use blue. Blue. Yeah. Most yeah. everybody's use blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all organizations. Some use red. Some use, some but use that's what I say mostly. Okay. <laughs> blue. And you see blue. Then we have different shades of blue. Sure. You see this blue today. Tomorrow you see the a other blue. A lighter shade. Mm. A, a lighter shade, sorry. Next time you see a darker shade. So it actually helps with consistency. So yes. Okay. So the brand guard helps. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, so. Now let's go back to our process. Mm -hmm. It went to the proofreaders. Yes. And then you said after. It should come back the to the designers. Mm -hmm. They will have to go through and then take into consideration whatever the proofreaders has said. Okay. All the changes, mm. the corrections, mm. and make sure everything is intact before. Is the proofreader allowed to make like a major change, change. to no. the document, to the content no. itself? No, the proofreader don't do that. Mm -hmm. What he does is to or she. Or he or she, sorry. We are gender sensitive. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> what he or she would do, we have to do is to mm -hmm. note down certain questions, things that are not clear to him or her, okay. then present it to the client. Mm -hmm. That was that that would be after we have input his changes. Okay. And mostly their changes is grammar. Okay. Maybe a sentence it means the same but it doesn't sound well. Okay. Uh -huh. So grammar or the is typo okay. the is the has the okay. will the okay. word where to put it and all that, okay. and when and all that. Mm. Uh -huh. So those are the things. Sort of uh, tiny, tiny, but critical. But they don't change the whole document because the report or the document is not yes. Sure. They don't have, they don't know the, 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 the intention behind. Some things could even be technical. technical. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that, you, you just, you don't touch it. So that is where if you are not clear, mm -hmm. you ask the client, okay. what is this? Mm. So, after we will do that, um, put input his corrections. I remember, I can't remember some. Be before, sorry, before it goes, goes to the, to the person, client, yes. Is that so? Yes. You won't check with the person that this is what the proofreader has done. It, should we accept it? No, that is where the, 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 the client will only see it when you are presenting a okay. sample, a dummy okay. copy. That is right. uh -huh. I remember where we there was a, a, a report. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's 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 not a report. It's like a plan okay. where they say we would, we would, and the proof of that change everything to we will, we will. It went back the, to the, the client. They said no, we want we would uh, because we would sounds polite to us. Okay, that's what they want. They want. Okay, uh -huh. so your job is to do what the client <laughs> wants. <laughs> so sometimes you go round and round, mm. and we say clients are always right. Sure. Yeah, so. With that, we, we, we most another thing is that mm. the proof would also make sure there's consistency in the documents. Okay, throughout. Throughout. Such so that you are not saying something here and then at page, at page 7. page 7, you are repeating the same thing but in, in a, a different, different context. Okay. Uh -huh. mm. And also the layout itself. Okay. Making sure you put a certain color here. Mm -hmm. Let's say blue, mm -hmm. a dark blue, and then at some point you put in lighter blue. Are you running all dark blues? Okay. Or all I believe. So the proofreader checks, checks for that as well? Those, yes. Okay. Yes. So they should have skills beyond just reading and editing? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. They should understand mm -hmm. um, the print process as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So after that, we will finish our design mm -hmm. and do a dummy copy. Per the client's request, do you want a hard copy? Okay. Sample or a soft copy mm -hmm. sample? Mm -hmm. Does this come at a price? Um, the first two copies, samples, hard copies are free. Okay. But the rest you do have to pay. Okay. From now on, <laughs> we will be requesting for hard copies. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes we, we also want to give you the hard copy okay. so that you know exactly how, how the final will work like. okay. will look like. Mm. Then we also encourage that you do all corrections in that sample okay. so that when we are changing it, mm. it will be easier. Mm. Mostly, you send a soft copy mm -hmm. and they send you back with corrections in a On word a processing page, again, which means you have to go all over okay. again mm -hmm. in the design process, mm -hmm. which is not right. Okay. Some you have to be on phone and if the network is bad, <laughs> you can <laughs> imagine. Show you, you <laughs> up into page, page 35. Uh -huh. Which takes Paragraph much time. Three. three lines or so and I so. Uh -huh. 
some also does well with I mean softwares they can put comments okay. but if the bar is not placed where mm -hmm. it should okay. you, you you have to call and mm. make sure it's correct and mm. all that mm -hmm. so you don't pay for samples okay. at least you have you are entitled to two okay after which you pay for the rest okay. right. yeah yeah so now you submitted the first dummy the first the dummy to the client now the dummy as you do okay should the client should see it they, they i'm sure they will have editors mm -hmm. or they'll be editing it by themselves okay. they should go through it and review the document mm -hmm. S in some cases excuse me <laughs> they can invite you to sure. come mm -hmm. Uh, where we'll go through together go through together okay. and also about the design questions and explanations okay. about why you chose this kind of colors okay. why you chose this where those are the people who don't have did not give you a brand, brand guide, guide. Okay. they want to understand why you went to this direction okay. Good. so and then you do all corrections as what's necessary mm. you just do them the client is supposed to go through review it do all amendments okay and then give you the soft copy, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, the hard copy back mm -hmm. for corrections. Okay. If it's a soft copy, mostly it's converted into PDF format. Mm -hmm. Comments are placed okay. on each page, each paragraph mm -hmm. where the corrections are. Okay. Then you do that. Mm -hmm. Then you revert back. Mm -hmm. But before you go back, your proofreader must also go through so again. That would have been the second stage. The second of stage. Proofreading. Proofreading. And, you know, sending damage. Because sometimes clients are some way. They do corrections and they are mistakes. Okay. So the proofreader must make sure this is correct. Okay. The sentence, mm. the grammar mm. is correct. Okay. Then you, when it's done, you also effect it in the design. Mm -hmm. Then it goes back okay. to the so client. So that will now be that the, will be the second stage copy and this time we hope that uh, approval will come okay. for printing okay. sometimes there are additional back and forths last minute fine tuning okay. and changes okay. and okay. Uh, tests to add corrections and all that okay. uh -huh. so this stage the second stage of sec uh, second dummy mm -hmm. sample to the client mm -hmm. which we give time for you to go through mm -hmm. So that maybe in tiny, tiny little corrections here then and there, we can and then we are fine. We can go. So that has been the uh, the process. The process. The first. The first. The first part where the clients are clients up to the whole review. Because there will be a time that the client will leave everything to you. Okay. Then you come back with the okay. final. Okay. Yeah. All right, viewers. Thanks for staying tuned. We are still live on AU TV, and this is the AU Talks. Our topic for discussion is publication of books. And we are joined by Mr. Richmond Daku, who is trying to explain what really goes into the process and into the process of coming out with these final products that we, s we see. Do stay tuned. We'll be back to continue the discussion after the short break. Hello, my name is Kemi. I'm a 300 level student of Vidimaz University. Do you know I still do not know the particular reason why I chose this university? I remember when I was in SS3, like most of you, I had dreams of what my university should be like. I had wanted to school abroad for standard consideration, but I was told I could get the same here. I wanted my university to be a citadel of education, with amiable faculties, a friendly environment with adequate facilities for both academic and social needs, and success-friendly teacher-student ratio. Guess what I meant here? This is our well-stocked library. Books, journals, on a wide range of subjects. Studying this array of updated materials in such a congenial environment like this sure does some good to assimilation. It is one thing to have facilities and another to have faculties who are result oriented. It was in this laboratory a renowned science professor and scholars curtailed Ebola. Yes, say I said so. We are leading research institution. Ours can easily pass for a five-star cafeteria. Good meals prepared and served with cautious hands here. Nourish our minds. This is my room. It is in suite. We are only two. I think we have the best in-campus student accommodation in Nigeria. Hail and happy. This is where I come from, medical rejuvenation. We engage in sporting activities and our department of theater and film studies 
will stop at nothing to provide us with quality performances. Lastly, I needed a place where I could receive spiritual guidance and counseling. As a Christian, where else can I find that other than the university founded by the Redeemer himself? Welcome back from that short break. The topic for discussion is still publication of books, what really goes into it. And just before the break, uh, Mr. Daku here was trying to tell us about the process uh, from the part where the client submits the Word document to typesetting, to designing, to proofreading, and then from there going on back to the client and all of that. And then just before the break, I think he ended at the point where the you presented, you presented the second, second one to dummy to the, dummy client, to the client okay. for a final approval. review. Yeah. For final mm. review. Sometimes approval. you don't get approval. Okay. For final review, mm. uh, mostly they want to um, do polishing touches to okay. it, fine tuning, okay. checking, making sure page by page everything is it's fine. fine. Mm. So wh when approval is given, okay, then we are done. I suppose. Then you go to press. Okay. So upon approval, mm -hmm. you if there are no corrections, okay. your proofreader must go through it finally because the devil, <laughs> the artist devil, mm -hmm. is always in the detail where okay. you can see mm. there might be some error somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes there are transfer errors. Okay where files can corrupt, text can corrupt sure. into symbols. Sure. So you go through finally to make sure everything is correct. Okay. After that, mm -hmm. then you enter. We are, so we are not done. Yeah, you're going to print. Yeah, okay. printing, uh, book publishing takes okay. much time. Quite, you know. so it looks like it's yes, quite yes, a, yes. a lengthy process. And sometimes it can take three months, two yes, months. Yes, how long does it take? Three, two months? Two months. Okay. If, if it is easy document, then mm -hmm. you can say, a month or two weeks mm. yeah before production okay and then we are fine yes so from there upon approval you go to press okay there are two types of printing okay digital book production and that is the quick one the quick one okay and then we have the traditional way of printing which is what the offset printing okay what goes into that offset printing you do after approval you go to pre-press mm -hmm. although the design process is part of the pre-press okay. this time around the author or the client mm -hmm. is not with you you alone with the documents okay. in the pre-press mm -hmm. those days they used to call it dark room where you produce color separation you do color separation which comes out in the film mm -hmm. form they use the film to produce a plate Okay. And it's a place that we use to do the final printing. That's quite technical. I'm yes. sure we are fine on those ones. Yes. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> or the digital print side. Okay. That one straight from your computer. It start printing. Okay. And our direct concept, that's what we do. Okay. Mostly digital book production. Yeah. The machine prints. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's quicker and you quicker, can do faster. a lot more. Yes, it prints and it falls, it stitch at okay. the same time. Everything. And Whereas the other one is... And all that you do is sometimes, you, the final thing you do is to trim. But, but that person. might be more expensive than the traditional one, right? Yes, but it's also quicker, okay. sharper. The okay. con they are consistency in colors. Okay. What you see from mm. beginning, that's what you see. It's consistent. And the last okay. mm. uh, uh, production. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we have majored mm. in at mm. Direct Concept. Um, um, we also know that most of the books, some... Mm -hmm. if not all, do have what we call the ISBN, the International Standard yeah. Book Number. Yes, yes, yes. This is a number that Can identifies... Can you tell us about that? Yeah, one. it's a number that identifies the book. Okay. For copyright's sake, mm -hmm. you need that book. Yeah. Especially books that... Books books for sale, okay. those kind of books. Mm. Most corporate organizations don't really... They don't... Uh, they don't take it okay. because they maybe they think it's a report or something. Okay. But some... Also, like A, you I know who wants ISBN number mm. to identify Even each. Even though the books are not, they are for not for sale. sale. Okay. To identify each mm. each book, mm. and it's always good to get them in bulk, okay. especially as an organization. So, uh, um, where for those of us who don't know, where mm. do we get these numbers? Or is it the client who gives to you, or you put? Uh, most most book publications, the client gives to they me give. okay. because they want to go and register in their own name. Okay. And I know you when you go to the Ghana Library Board, okay. you, you that get is where they can yeah, get it in Ghana. Get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's quite um, interesting. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the second part of this interview, which has to do with the career aspect mm -hmm. of the publishing yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. If I'm interested in being a publisher, or I'm interested in having sort of a printing business, sort of, how do I start or where do I start? Okay, if you want to be a printer, okay. not being the business, you know, being a business mm -hmm. as a business person, you okay. just acquire the machines and s you some start. people handle it for you. Okay. But if you want to be a printer, a graphic designer, mm -hmm. first of all, you need to have the passion for it. Okay. The work itself is, is exciting, mm -hmm. but then it's stressful. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the passion for it, I'm not sure you'll be able to <laughs> survive in it. Mm. So first of all, you have the passion. Mm -hmm. And if you are young, and let's like say you yourself. are... yourself. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. You don't consider yourself <laughs> young. <laughs> I'm old, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if, like a young person okay. in school, mm -hmm. mm, let's say in the high school, and you want to do printing, then you need to take visual art as a course. Okay. But before, I'm at the university. You're at the university. Uh, then you need to be doing what? A different course. A different, different course. Or social science or something. You need to learn. Okay. Okay, maybe after university, you can take a second degree okay. into a, a BA, 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 like business, Bachelor's of Arts. That would be also a first degree. A first degree. Yes. Or at the Polytechnic, you can also do that. You can also do graphics. Mm. And through that, you, the graphics itself is big, it's broad. Mm. The careers under graphic design is huge. We have cartoonists, we have animators. Mm. But all these cameramen, all these cameramen and the graphics. So okay. into printing, they need to learn the graphic design mm. itself in the printing process. B but do I necessarily need to have like a full-time degree or polytechnic? Don't you can uh, take don't a part-time course? Yes, yes you can take like a part-time courses. Okay. But most part-time courses I've seen here in Ghana is just computer school, where they will teach you train you on how to use a particular software okay. in designing. Mm. But it doesn't end there. Okay. You need to Build understand yourself. the process. Okay. Mm. You need to understand the process, what goes into mm. it. So if, if, if you have a education mm -hmm. on it, mm. that will really help. Mm. Because I know some people who just go to a computer school, get knowledge on how to use a particular design software and they say they are graphic designers, they are printers. It's good, it's fine, but do you really understand it? Okay. So it is always good, especially for young people. Mm -hmm. You need to go through the process mm -hmm. in education and then make yourself strong for it because the printing itself is not just what you see, you the final. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody put it this way. Mm -hmm. The stress you go through in the office, okay. when you are printing just a letter, <laughs> you issue the command, you go to the printer, it's not it's printing. Not we face 10 times more that problem okay. when we are printing. Mm -hmm. So if you, you, don't, if you don't understand the process, <laughs> you, 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 you back off mm -hmm. and you can't you can really do it. Okay. So it's a good business and it's very neat work. Mm. Is it lucrative? Very, 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 very. There's a lot of money in there. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There's money in it. Mm. If that is if you get more jobs. Okay. If you don't get jobs, no money. Mm. Yes. And it makes you also, I mean, um, how do I put it? Learn. Okay. It makes you learn. Cause because you read, you read all the content you work on? Not all, but sometimes you open a particular page just to read and okay. you get some kind of... You would learn. Yes, That's you learn. Interesting. Yes. Some books, if, if it's bulky, sometimes you run away, but if it's small, <laughs> sometimes you run. You end up, before you realize, you finish reading all. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it's cool. So now I've had the um, educational qualifications. Yes. The soft qualities you spoke about. Yes. Uh, and I mean the business. Mm -hmm. What is needed to keep me in business? How do I make sure I you need to You stay? need printing systems what what are those machines okay we have freelancers mm -hmm. graphic design mm -hmm. they design upon approval they sublet okay it's good 
some are very good. They, they are design sells them, so they always get the design mm. to get the job. But some companies do want to work with you. They, there are some uh, books okay. which are very confidential. They don't want it to be seen some anywhere else. So they will want to deal with you, especially you, the printer, who has in-house printing systems. Okay. That their jobs will not be sent somewhere mm. because you are sold. So it's better to have your own your own systems. Okay. Yeah. So just before we go, I want you to tell me maybe one or two challenges faced in this uh, industry. Has there been a situation where you printed books for somebody and the person rejected? In my case, no. Okay. And I don't wish. But you know of any? But I know, I know of a lot, a lot of people who go through that. Mm. Sometimes it's their fault. Okay. Sometimes too, it's the fault of the client. Mm. What I believe is, before you give me an approval, you, sh you the client, should make sure that you are okay, okay. With, the, with everything, coloring, your logo is it correct, the color is it correct, mm -hmm. everything. Because as soon as you approve, mm -hmm. you are telling me that you, you like everything ahead. in okay. it. Mm. Most often, sometimes in the process, especially with traditional printing, mm. the offset printing, the process where you go through color separation, in the separation process, Things some parts can corrupt. Okay. Which, if you don't see, if you don't see, or oh, end you, you, I mean, rejecting the job. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's been really wonderful having you here. Uh, would like to go, but before we go, I want you to really talk to the young people who, like, uh, may be interested in having mm. various careers in the in printing. printing and publishing business. Just speak directly to them. Uh, those watching us, <laughs> and then that would okay. be your last words. Uh, well, um, as I said earlier on, if you're a young person, you want to do printing, before you enter secondary school, the course, the preferred course for you is visual art. And visual art is big, I know. Don't use testers. It's also good, but if you want to do printing, choose graphics. It should be one of your electives, graphics. From there, you get a basic knowledge in printing, you get business in all aspects, but you master in printing. At the tertiary, continue, pursue the same course, and you come up and become a star. And on your own, do your own research. Find magazines, study how they, it's been laid out, how the designs are, and you are good to go. And you become a star in the future. Yeah, it's because printing is good. It's good. Um, it takes you places as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've gone places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Richmond Daco. Yeah. And Richmond Daco is the CEO and creative director of Direct Concept. And he's been our guest on the show today. He's really tried to tell us what goes into publications. It's actually quite a lot of work. We just see it and then we buy it off the shelves and start reading, but a lot of work has really gone into it. And books, like I said from the beginning, is one key item that as higher education stakeholders, we really can't do without. So it's good we know what really goes into the publications. So this has been another exciting edition of the AU Talks. My name is Felicia Kwagbeji, and our topic for discussion today has been the publication of books, what goes into it. Thanks for staying tuned, and do keep on watching AUTV for more interesting programs. Thank you, and see you again next time.